Hello, beautiful people living within my laptop. I'm Finn, and today, Mama's gonna be reading for you guys. She's gonna be leading, reading a little bit of Lovecraft. Be reading uh, today. We'll be reading *The Beast in the Cave*. The horrible conclusion, which had been gradually obtruding itself upon my confused and reluctant mind. Was now an awful certainty. I was lost, completely, hopelessly lost in the vast labyrinthine recesses of this mammoth cave. Turn as I might, in no direction could my straining vision seize on any object capable of serving as a guidepost to set me on the outward path. That nevermore should, that nevermore should I behold the blessed light of day, or scan the pleasant hills, or dales of the beautiful outside world. My reason could no longer entertain the slightest unbelief. Hope had departed, yet, indoctrined as I was by a life of philosophical study, I derived no small pleasure for satisfaction from my unimpassioned demeanor. For although I had frequently read of the wild frenzies into which were thrown, the victims of similar situations I experienced, none of these, but stood quiet as soon as I clearly realized the loss of my bearings. Nor did the thought that I had probably wandered beyond the utmost limits of an ordinary search cause me to abandon my composure even for a moment. If I must die, I reflected. Then I was this terrible yet majestic cavern as welcome as, that's a word I don't know, S sepulture? I don't know that word. I need to learn how to read. Sepulture as that which any churchyard might afford, a conception which carried with it more of tranquility than of despair. Starving would prove my ultimate fate. This was I, Of this I was certain. Some... I knew had gone mad under circumstances such as these, but I felt that this end would not be mine. My disaster was the result of no fault save of my own, since unbeknown to the guide I had separated myself from the regular party of see sightseers and wandered, wandering for over an hour in forbidden avenues of the cave and found myself unable to retrace the devious windings which I had pursued since forsaking my companions. Already my torch had begun to expire. Soon I would be enveloped by the total and almost palpable blackness of the bowels of the earth. As I stood in the waning, unsteady light, I idly wondered over the exact circumstances of my coming end. I remembered the accounts which I had heard of the colony of consumptives who taken their residency in this gigantic grotto to find health from the apparent salubrious air of the underground world with its steady uniform temperature pure air and peaceful quiet had found instead death in strange and ghastly forms i had seen the sad remains of their ill-made cottages as i passed by them with the party and had wondered what unnatural influence a long sojourn in this immense and silent cavern would extort upon one as healthy and as vigorous as i now I grimly told myself my opportunity for settling this point had arrived, provided that w that want of food should not bring me to speedy departure from this life. As the last fitful rays of my torch faded into obscurity, I resolved to leave no stone unturned, no possible means of escape neglective. So summoning all the powers possessing my lungs, I set up a series of loud shoutings in the vain hope of attracting the attention of the guide by my clamor. Yet as I called, I believed in my heart that my cries were to no purpose, that my voice, magnified and reflected by the numberless brewpots of a black maze about me, fell upon no ears save my own. All at once, however, my attention was fixed with a start, as I fancied that I heard the sound of a soft approaching step on the rocky floor of the cavern, was my deliverance about to be accomplished so soon? Had then all my horrible apprehensions been for naught, and was the guide, having marked my unwarranted absence from the party following my course and seeking me out in this limestone labyrinth, 
Whilst these joyful queries arose in my brain, I was on the point of renewing my cries in order that my discovery might come sooner. When an instant my delight was turned to horror as I listened for my ever-acute ear, now sharpened in even greater degree. By the complete silence of the cave boredom, I benumbled understanding the unexpected and dreadful knowledge that these foot footfalls were not like those of any mortal man. In the unearthly stillness of the subterranean region, the tread of the booted guide would have sounded like a series of sharp and incisive blows. These impacts were soft and stealthy, as of the padded paws of some feline. Besides, at times, when I listened carefully, it seemed the trace of the falls and four instead of two feet. I was now convinced that I had, by my cries, aroused and attracted some wild beast, perhaps a mountain lion which had accidentally strayed within the cave. Perhaps I considered the Almighty had chosen me a swifter and more merciful death than that of hunger. Yet the instinct of self-preservation, never wholly dormant, was stirred in my breast. And though escape from the incoming peril might but spare me for a sterner, more lingering end, I determined nevertheless to part with my life as high as price as I could command, and strange as it may seem, my mind conceived no intent on the part of the visitor, save that the hostility... There's a car going by. That's helpful. Ah, oh, shit. No, I don't know where I was... Where was I? Oh, no. I can't read. No. It, uh... Accordingly, I became very quiet in the hope that the unknown, unknown beast would, in the absence of a guiding sound, lose its direction, as had I, and thus pass me by. But this hope was not destined for realization, for the strange footfalls steadily advanced, the animal evidently having obtained my scent, which in an atmosphere so absolutely free from all distracting influences as the cave, could double it, do doubtless be followed at great distance. Seeing, therefore, that I must be armed for defense against my uncanny and unseen attack in the dark, I grouped about me in the largest of fragments of rock, which was strewn upon all parts of the floor of the cavern in the vicinity, grasping one in each hand for immediate use, awaiting, with resignation, that inevitable result. Meanwhile, the hideous pattering of the paws drew near. Certainly the conduct of the creature was exceedingly strange. Most of the time the tread seemed to be that of quadruped, walking with a singular lack of unison betwixt hind and four feet. Yet at brief and infrequent intervals I fancied that but two feet were engorged in the process. I wondered what species of animal was about to confront me. It must, I thought, be some unfortunate beast who had paid for its curiosity to investigate. With a lifelong confinement in its inter interminable in intermin interminable interminable recesses, it doubtless obtained car. It obtained car. What did I read? What? It doubtless obtained as food the eilish fish, bats, and rats of the cave, as well as some of the ordinary fish that were wafted in every freshet of the Green River, which communicates in some occult manner with the waters of the cave. I occupied my terrible vigil with grotesque conjuring of what altercations caves, cave life might have wrought in the physical structure of the beast, remembering the awful appearances ascribed by local tra tradition to the consecutives who had died after long residence in the cavern. Then I remembered with a start that even should I succeed in killing my antagonist, I should never behold its form, as my torch had long since been extinct and I was entirely unprovided with matches. The tension on my brain now became frightful. My disordered fancy conjured up hideous and fearsome shapes from the sinister darkness that surrounded me, and that actually seemed to press upon my body. Nearer and nearer, the dreadful footfalls approached. It seemed that I must give vent to a piercing stream. Yet had I been sufficiently resolute to attempt such a thing, my voice could scarce but have responded. I was petrified, rooted to the spot. 
I doubted if my right arm would allow me to hurl its missile at the oncoming thing when the crucial moment should arrive. Now the steady pat of its footsteps, close at hand. Now very close, I could hear the, lab the labored breathing of the animal, and the terror struck as I was, I realized that it must have come from a considerable distance as was con correspondingly fatigued. Suddenly the spell broke, and my right hand guided my ever-so-trustworthy sense of hearing through with full force with the sharp angled bit of the limestone which it contained toward the point in the darkness from, the which, from which emanated the breathing and pattering, and wonderful to relate. It's nearly reached its goal, for I heard the thing jump, landing at the distance away where it seemed to pause. Having readjusted my aim, I discharged my second missile, this time most effective, for with f flood of joy I listened for the creature to fell, as it fell in what sounded like a complete collapse and evidently remained prone and unmoving, almost overpowered by the great relief which rushed me. I reeled back against the wall, the breathing continued, and heavy, gasping inhalations and expirations. Once I realized that I had no more than, one, than wounded the creature, and now all desire to examine the thing ceased. At last something applied to the groundless, super superstitious fear had entered my brain, and I did not approach the body, nor did I continue to cast stones at it in order to compete with the extinction of its life. Instead, I ran at full speed in what was as nearly as I could estimate in my frenzied condition the direction from which I had come. Suddenly, I heard a sound, or rather, a regular succession of sounds in, other, in another instance. They had resolved themselves into a series of sharp, metallic clicks. This time, there were no doubt it was the guide, and then I shouted, yelled, screamed, even shrieked with joy as I beheld in the vaulted arches above the faint and glimmering effect Effulgence, effulgence, the glimmering effulgence which I knew to be the reflected light of an approaching torch. I ran to meet the flare, and before I could completely understand what had occurred, was lying b upon the ground at the feet of the guide, embracing his boots and gibbering, despite my boasted reserve, in the most meaningless and idiotic manner, pouring out of my terrible story, and at the same time overwhelming my auditor with per pro Pro protestations of gratitude. At length I, I woke in something like my normal conscious. The guide had noted my absence upon the arrival of the party at the entrance of the cave and had, from his own intuitive sense of direction, proceeded to make a thorough canvas of the by-passages just ahead of where he had last spoken to me, locating my whereabouts after a quest of about four hours. By the time he had relayed this to me, I, emboldened with his torch and his company, began to reflect upon the strange beast which I had wounded, but a short distance back in the darkness, suggesting that we ascertain by the rushlight's aid what manner of the creature was my victim. According, I retraced my steps, this time with courage and born of companionship to the scene of my terrible experience. Soon we dis descried at a white object upon the floor, an object wider even than the gleaming limestone itself, cautiously advancing. We gave vent to the simultaneous ej ejaculation of wonderment. <laughs> For all the unnatural monsters either of us had in either of us had in our lifetimes beheld, this was a surprise, surpassing degree, the strangest. It appeared to be anthro anthropoid ape of large proportions, escaped perhaps from some entangled menagerie. Its hair was snow white, a thing due no doubt to the bleaching action of a long existence within the linky confines of the cave, but it was also surprisingly thin, being indeed largely absent save on the head, where it had such length and abundance that it fell over the shoulders. In considerable profusion, the face was turned away from us, the creature laying almost directly upon it. The inclination of the limbs was very singular, explaining, however, the alternation in their use, which I had noted before, whereby the beast used sometimes all four and on other occasions just two, from the tips of the fingers or toes, long nail-like claws extended, the hand or feet were not prehensile, a fact I had ascribed to that long resonance in the cave, which as I b before mentioned seemed evident for all the pervading and almost unearthly whiteness so characteristic of the whole anatomy, no tail seemed to be present.
The respirations had now grown very feeble, and the guide had drawn his pistol with the evident intent of dispatching the creature when a sudden sound emitted from the latter caused the weapon to fall unused. The sound was of nature difficult to describe. It was not like a normal note of any known species of simian, and I wondered if this unnatural quality were not the result of a long-continued and complete silence, broken by the sensations produced by the advent of light, a thing which the beast could not have seen its first entrance into the cave. The sound which I might feebly attempt to classify as a kind of deep-toned chattering was faintly continued. All at once a fleeting spasm of energy seemed to pass through the frame of the beast. The paws went through an occlus a conclusive motion and the limbs contracted with a jerk. The white body rolled over so that its face was turned in our direction. For a moment I was so struck with horror at the eyes thus revealed that I noted nothing else. They were black, those eyes deep, jetty black, in hideous contrast to the snow-white hair and flesh. Like those or other cave denizens, they were deeply sunken into their orbits and were entirely destitute of iris. As I looked more closely, I saw that they were set in a face less prognathous than that of the average ape and infinitely more hairy. The nose was quite distinct. As we gazed upon the uncanny sight presented to our vision, the thick lips opened and several sounds issued from them, after which the thing relaxed in death. The guide clutched my coat sleeve and trembled so violently that the light shook, fitfully casting weird moving shadows on the walls about us. I made no motion, but stood rigidly still, my horrified eyes fixed upon the floor ahead. Then fear left, and wonder, awe, compassion, and reverence succeeded in its place, for the sounds uttered by the stricken figure that lay stretched out on the limestone had told us the awesome truth. The creature I had killed, the strange beast of the unfathomed cave, was, or had at one time been, a man. And that was my really, really bad uh, reading of H.P. Uh, Lovecraft's, uh, oh lord, stop, please, uh, The Beast in the Cave. Um... I appreciate whoever stuck around and listened to it. I thoroughly enjoyed that. There's also a lot more. This tiny little note way over here. This is what we got. That's what's left. So I'm going to read more. Um, I... Yeah, I knew that was going to... I'm scared. Um, I... I am doing this, uh, A, because I want to make more stuff, and it just takes a minute to do, so it gets watch time, you know what I mean? Uh, but also, I want to learn how to read, because I, I don't know if you could tell, but I can't. I mean, I read six pages in 20 minutes. I'm not able to read, and I didn't know a bunch of words. But yeah, I'm going to do that maybe once a week or so, uh, just to do something, I guess. It was fun. This was fun. But yeah, there's a lot more in here. Um, I don't know how many there is. I can look, though. Um, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Oh, that's a lot. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So 64. Is that all? Is it 64? No, nope, there's more. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten. There's seventy. There's seventy more. There, there's sixty nine. There's sixty nine more. So, theoretically, there should be seventy of these whenever I'm done. Unless I maybe do one or two at a time. I don't know. We'll figure it out next time. Uh, bye, bye, bye. Thank you for sticking around. I love you guys. Bye, bye. <laughs>